hello i will continue my the chapter two i will continue the chapter two why women burn out parang nainis naisip ko parang ano siya medyo gahula ko sa ano pag bago ako matulog magbabasa so i'll try na bago ako mag close sa pindahan yung sa pwesto ko is doon ako magbabasa one hour before mag close so let's start why women burn out today while men are away working women are also away working modern women don't have the time energy or opportunity to support each other as their mothers did a modern woman will give and give but because she is not feeling supported she commonly returns home feeling burned out in addition when a woman is dependent not on a man but on her work to survive her tendency to give freely is also restricted if a woman gives to make money her support is not freely offered this manner of conditional giving further connects further disconnects her from her femininity working women are required to be overly masculine they are no longer supported in expressing their feminine female femaleness through mothering working together in cooperative and nurturing relationships gathering shopping and homemaking this tipping of the balance toward the masculine aspect is rapidly creating female female burnout and dissatisfaction throughout the modern world the women of ancient days didn't burn out because their work environment nurtured their female nature women today burn out because they are not being sufficiently nurtured in their jobs it is not how much a woman does but the quality of her relationships and the support she receives that determine the difference between burnout and fulfillment Learning from the wisdom of the past. Traditionally, women felt proud of their biological rules since mothering was highly honored, respected, and even considered sacred. In some cultures, a woman was seen as being closer to God than a man, for she alone had been given the power to create life. Women were honored as the mothers, and men gladly became warriors, willing to risk their lives to provide for and protect the mothers of their children. Going back just to my mother's generation, it is easy to find women who felt very good about themselves as mothers. I remember once as an adult asking my mother if she had liked being a mother. Her immediate response was, Well, Jan, I still am a mother and I still love it. I feel so fortunate to have seven beautiful children. I was surprised that she so strongly and proudly identified herself as a mother even after her children were grown. I felt fortunate that she hadn't had to go to work and had truly enjoyed being a full-time mom with a husband to support her. Huh? Lucy. Mm. I was surprised and I was surprised that she strongly and proudly identified herself as a mother even after her children were grown up were grown. I felt fortunate that she hadn't had to go to work and had truly enjoyed being a full time mom with a husband to support her. Most mothers today do not often have the luxury of full time parenting. Having kids and having a job mandate a very difficult list of duties, requiring new skills that your mother definitely could not have taught you. Without these strategies, the juggling of motherhood and career amounts to a tortoise trick through uncharted territory. 
contemporary women considering motherhood are understandably hesitant. While I am in no way suggesting that we turn back the clock and encourage women back into the kitchen, it is important that we understand what we have given up as we strive forward on our quest for a new and better world for both women and men, we need to keep in mind the wisdom of the past and use it wherever applicable. Contained in that ancient wisdom are certain elements that are essential for female and male contentment. We should never lose touch with the ancient truths that have always enhanced female and male fulfillment. Through understanding them, we can more effectively map out fresh approaches to relating that fulfill our instinct while allowing us to move ahead to new goals and dreams. A woman's work is never done. I remember a very telling conversation on the subject of contemporary motherhood. While I was signing books in a bookstore, three women and my wife were sharing stories about how difficult it is to be a mother today. When one woman disclosed that she was the mother of seven, another immediately gaps in admiration and sympathy. I only have two children, she said, and I thought I had it bad. How do you do it? A third mother added, I have only one child and that wears me out. I have three children, said my wife, and I thought that was a lot. I can't imagine how you handle seven. Whether you have one, two, three, or seven kids, you give them everything you had. The mother of seven replied, You only have so much to give, and every mother, no matter how many children she has, gives it all. Suddenly, the other three mothers realized they were in effect doing the same job. They were each giving everything they had to give to mothering. They were following the ancient wisdom. This insight completely changed my relationship with my wife. Before, when she complained about doing so much, I assumed she would never be happy until she learned to do less. Now I realized her doing too much was not the problem because she would always do all she could. Instead, I began to focus on finding ways to nurture her female side as she give and give. Not only was she happier, but because she felt so much more supported, she could indeed relax and do less. Overgiving is not dysfunctional. Giving too much becomes a problem only when a woman is not adept in getting back the nurturing support she needs to continue giving. Many popular books label women who give too much as codependent or dysfunctional when in many cases they are not. They are just following their healthy feminine instinct to give freely of themselves. A woman's natural inclination to give unconditionally becomes problematic only when her business and personal relationships do not nurture her in return. The more focused, responsible, competitive, and aggressive she is, required to be at work, the more difficult it is for her to reconnect with the softness of her femininity when she gets home. It is then more difficult for her clearly to fill her needs. A woman will return home and continue thinking about the needs of others. When a modern woman gets home, she generally doesn't have the energy her mother had for domestic work. Instead of looking forward to and enjoying some nice downtime, a woman to various degrees is driven to do more and can't relax. Although she instinctively feels she has to do more, she doesn't have the energy. This combination of feelings makes her feel suddenly exhausted and dissatisfied with her life. The Nurtured Cure if an exhausted woman is given a big dose of nurturing, I assure you that she will get a second wind and not only more effective cope with her need to act but actually enjoy it. When a woman feels exhausted, it is because she is not nurturing her female side. When a woman's female side is nurtured, her body begins to function naturally and her exhaustion magically lifts. This does not mean that women today don't need more help around the house. It is important that a man understand that modern women 
do require more support in the home. It is, however, also equally important that a woman understand that in some cases, her expectations of what needs to be done in the home are unrealistic, given that they may be based on a standard set by a generation of women who had more time for housework. While it is not fair to place those expectations on her male partner, it is also not fair for a man to ignore her le legitimate need for more emotional support. While the resolution of this problem will be different in every situation, the ability to resolve this potential conflict is based on mutual understanding, patience, and compassion. What a man can do through allotting an extra 20 minutes through allotting an extra 20 minutes 3 or 4 days a week 20 minutes 3 or 4 days a week a man can do wonders to nurture a woman's female side not only will she be happier but he will begin to get the appreciation and acceptance he needs when he gets home no matter how overworked or exhausted she feels he can, with a small amount of concentrated attention, focus his love and caring in ways that makes a big difference. Unless he comprehends the importance of nurturing a woman's female side, he may mistakenly leave her alone or try to persuade her to do less. Neither approach works and may actually alienate her. Quite commonly, he might say any of the comments listed to her, thinking he is being helpful, being thinking he is being helpful when he is really making matter worse he mistakenly says he says you take on too much he really means you deserve more support so she hears she hears you don't leave enough time for me but she thinks he doesn't value all that i do and just wants more he says you shouldn't worry about that he really means, I care about you and I am here to support you if the problem get, gets worse. She hears, what do you, what you are worried about is really not that important. She thinks he doesn't care about what is important to me. He says, it's not that bad. He really means, I trust that you will handle it. You are quite competent and capable and I am sure that you will work it out. I believe in you. She hears, you are once again making a mountain out of a molehill. You are an alarmist overreacting to the problem. She thinks he doesn't care about my feelings. I am not important to him. So, iba-iba yung ano talaga. Yung understanding. So, mistakenly, yung sinasabi ng lalaki, parang iba yung naririnig ng mga babae. This is what the book says. He's, he says, you expect too much of yourself. He means, I think you are wonderful and you give so much of yourself to others. I appreciate what you do and I think you deserve a lot more support than you get. I understand if you have less to give me today. But she hears, you shouldn't be upset with yourself. You are always getting upset for no good reason. She thinks he doesn't understand what I am going through and why I feel so bad. Nobody understands what I am going through. Mm. He says, if you are going to complain about it, then just don't do it. He means I care about you and I don't want you to do what you don't want to do. You already do so much. You deserve to relax more. But she hears, you are being too negative. Anybody else will be able to do it, but you can't. She thinks, he thinks I only care about myself. He doesn't understand how much I do for others. Mm. He mistakenly says, he says, if you don't want to do it, then don't. He means you already give so much. I don't expect you to do more. You deserve to have more of what you want. She hears a loving person will be happy to give more. She thinks, he thinks that I am selfish and that I am not entitled to relax and give to myself. He says, you don't have to do so much. He means, what you do is already so supportive that I don't expect you to do more. She hears, what you're doing is unnecessary and a waste of time. 
She thinks if he doesn't value what I do, I will never get the support I need in return. Mm. Okay. Yun pala yun. Simply trying to understand what her feelings are and what she goes through with some empathy or sympathy in not making any of these comments can have a tremendous nurturing effect on a woman's female side. An overworked woman with neither the time nor the opportunity to nurture her female side may not even be aware of what she's missing. Consequently, she may not know how to recapture her femininity. To do so, she needs a healthy dose of relationship. Anything a man can do to nurture her female side will assist her in releasing her cares. A man can skillfully respond when a woman feels overwhelmed by addressing the female side of her being, which cries out for nurturing. Through addressing this female side of her being, a man can respond compassionately and skillfully to a woman feeling exhausted and overwhelmed. Through clearly delineating her male and female aspects, he can effectively work at the steering her toward feeling like herself again. A perfect fit. A woman can most successfully cope with the stress of experiencing non-nurturing relationships in the goal-oriented work world by coming home and experiencing a loving, caring, and cooperative relationships. The most important element of nurturing relationship that she is generally missing at work is non-goal-oriented conversation. Through talking in a non-goal-oriented way, without having to get to the bottom line, without having to solve the problem, a woman is gradually released from the domination of her masculine side. Talking in a non-linear, unedited, emotional way is especially beneficial when her listener understand that by articulating, but that by articulating her problems, she can put them aside. That a woman can forget the problems of her day by remembering them is a concept foreign to most men who generally banish the problems of the day by not talking about them. To bring them up in conversation, a man would have to address himself to solving them. While it is important to men not to talk, it is equally important to women to talk. This apparent incompatibility is actually we will find a perfect fit. When a woman needs to talk, it is really not necessary for a man to talk. In fact, if he, he talks too much, it can actually prevent her from opening up. When he thinks too much about what he is going to say, his mental focus shifts away from her. Any man will listen when he is approached in the right way. Telling a man, you never listen to me or we never talk, we should talk more, is definitely taking the wrong tack. Such comments only make a man feel blame, attack, and defensive. So never pala talagang ganyan. Any man can learn to listen if he is approached in an appreciative, welcoming manner. So how to get a man to listen? An approach my wife uses is simply to ask me to listen. She'll say, oh, I'm glad. Oh, I'm so glad you're home. I had such a day. Will this be a good time to talk about it? Pause. You don't have to say anything. Little pause. I'm sure I'll feel better if I can just talk about it by inviting me to listen in this way she gives me what i really want a chance to make her happy and she gets what she needs most the opportunity to talk share and nurture her female side when women support their male partners in supporting them everybody wins with practice sympathetic listening can eventually become easy for a man paradoxically what women need most from men can be given with a minimum of effort all the listening in this special way is a new requirement for men and relationships. It is a talent we have spent thousands of years preparing for. Since the ancient hunter's major task was to watch and listen silently, men are good at it. Once he acquires the knack of applying this traditional talent to listening to his mate, a man can give a woman the special, focused attention she finds so wonderfully fulfilling. The Art of Listening the art of listening to a woman does not entail solving problems or offering advice. Conversely, a male listener's goal should be helping his partner regain his feminine masculine balance. This new job description clarifies his goal and thus guides him to watch and listen while giving her the sympathy she graves, not the solution. 
Men must remember a woman talks about her problem not to solve them but to nurture the female side of her psyche. To develop skill in listening, a man needs to recognize that when a woman is upset and seems to be demanding solution to her problems, it is only because she is still operating primary from her male side. By not responding with solution, he assists her in finding her female side. She will then eventually feel better. Men are easily tricked into thinking that if they can give solutions, women will then feel better. Remembering this is particularly helpful when a man feels a woman is upset with him. To explain why she shouldn't be so upset with him only makes matters worse. Although he may have disappointed her in some ways, he must remember that her real complaint is that she is not being heard or nurtured as a woman. When his partner is upset with him, a man needs to remember that she has temporarily forgotten how wonderful he is. To remember, she needs to feel heard. Then she will be capable of and eager to bestow on him the appreciation and acknowledgement that he has earned. What men really want What men really want. These days, when a man gets home, his wife not only is overwhelmed, but is generally needy. She may not have love in her heart, but he doesn't see it. Deep in his soul, a man expects his woman to acknowledge and appreciate his efforts in some measure, be fulfilled by them. When she does not seem happy to see him, something very significant begins to happen. His tender but passionate desire to please her protect her and provide for her is dampened and it's eventually snuffed out. Men don't generally pinpoint what is happening inside themselves because they are more concerned with trying to make women happy. Yet the more a woman acts and reacts from feelings of unhappiness, something inside a man switches, switches off. When his hard work seems to count for nothing, his life and relationship lose all magic and meaning for him. Remember, what a man really wants is to make his partner happy. If he loves a woman, his primary goal is her fulfillment. Her happiness signals to him that he is loved. Her warm responses are like a mirror reflecting back to him a shining image. When a woman is unhappy, a man may feel like a failure and may eventually give up trying to fulfill her. Tay, basta sa ako kadali, tay. Manal na ko ni. Ay, sal sa ba? Understanding our differences. This understanding of what men really want does not imply that a woman doesn't care about her partner's happiness as well. Certainly, when a woman loves a man, she wants him to also be happy. But note this crucial difference between men and women. A man can be stressed out from a day at work, but if his partner is happy with him, he feels fulfilled. When he ceases her appreciation for his labor, his stress level dissipates. Her happiness is like a shower that washes away the stressful crime on his day. Okay, However, when an exhausted woman returns home to a happy man, he doesn't make her day. It's great that he appreciates her hard work to help support the family, but it doesn't in the least diminish his unease. As we have discussed, she needs to communicate and feel some nurturing support before she can begin to appreciate him. A man thrives on appreciation because it directly nurtures his male side. A woman thrives on communication because it directly nurtures her female side. By understanding and honoring that men thrive on appreciation and women on our communication, we gain the knowledge and the power to create mutually fulfilling relationships. Even if you read only this chapter and apply these insights, your relationships will change forever for the better. To utilize this new understanding most effectively, 
we will explore a new job description for both partners in a relationship in the next chapter just as we must update our skills in business so also do we need job restraining in our relationships and that's end for chapter two thank you thank you thank you that's all bye bye god bless us all